Hello, BookTube. Sorry for the, the bad lighting here, but we're down in the, the, the Penguin Annex shelves down here again, down the very darkest bottom corner of the room. Uh, so th there's not much I can do for lighting unless I, you know, film during the day. <laughs> but I have other, I had other things to do today. I had jury duty. <laughs> uh, but I'm just, we're just going to go through these, th the next shelf here. I'm learning a lot about these books. A lot of them, uh, this almost feels like uh, they've been discarded here, which is weird for me to think about with Penguin Classics. But I'm noticing a pattern on every shelf where there'll be a bunch of stuff that I don't particularly care about, and then one or two things where I care about so much that I don't know what they're doing on these these ill-lit side shelves. I'm wondering if that'll hold true. Would this... Well, let's let's see what this the first one is here. This is... Uh, okay, this is uh, On Liberty by John Stuart Mill and the Subjugation of Women. This is uh, two philosophical tracts by John Stuart Mill. He's quite the head trip. <laughs> he's quite the head trip to read. He's, uh, he's philosophy for adults. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I would prefer a big, heavily annotated Penguin Classic Edition of Just on Liberty. Uh, but I have this volume anyway. Uh, and then what have we got? Oh, Thomas Hardy, Far From the Madding Crowd. What this is doing here, I have all the uh, the, the writers of his time period in a different shelf. Uh, I, I think I probably just forgot this was down here. Uh, what's next here? Oh, some Balzac. I got a little Balzac just today. Uh, I got a Harlot High and Low today in the mail from one of you. And uh, that that is an extra spur to put all of it together. That all every, all from every book from every from the same author should be together. Uh, let's see here, the letters of Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, I've read some of these. I have never I have never actually sat down and worked my way through the whole the whole volume. Uh, and this next one is letters as well. This one I have worked my way through many many times. <laughs> this one I love. Uh, this lady. Lady Montague. This is the selector's letters of Lady Mary Wortley Montague, a fantastic letter writer and a, fan, a really cinematic letter writer, uh, describing all the weird sights that she saw, all of her thoughts, and also a good deal of puckish humor. <laughs> uh, this is just a delightful vlog. I wish it were bigger. You could easily make something three, three times this size. Uh, <laughs> Theodore Fontaine. Uh, this is No Way Back. Uh, about a, well, let me let me read it to you. This is this is actually a very very entertaining novel, uh, even in English. Charming, cheerful Count Hulk is delighted to be called away from his solemn wife to the distant court of a Danish princess. Swept up in the romance of his new lively surroundings at a castle by the sea, the Count does not realize that not everyone there is what they seem, and that a wrong decision may have fatal consequences. <laughs> it was done just before the turn of the twentieth century, and it's delightful to read. Uh, this next one's huge. Oh my! Oh look at that! I completely forgot I had a penguin tran. A oh, this is one of the great novels of the 20th century. This is the the Recognitions by William Gaddis, uh, which is as as a kernel of all that's going on in it is it is about an art forger. But that's like saying Moby Dick is about a whale. It's it's so much more than that. This is. Uh, when you make a short list, six, seven, maybe five of the greatest books of the 20th century, this is one of them, and people don't know it. It's one of the ones people don't know, except it has a Penguin Classic. This does not does not belong on this shelf. This belongs somewhere else, somewhere uh, more prominent. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay, this is uh, the autobiography of Emma Goldman, the anarchist Emma Goldman. Uh, big, hefty thing. She was a very, very good writer, uh, but uh, her life and her autobiography don't interest me all that much. So this is a perfect illustration of the problem of this Penguin Annex, because it's next to the Recognitions, which I, I semi-regularly reread. They shouldn't be, if there's not any order, of course, they're not really linked. You've got people from all nationalities and time periods here. If that's true, uh, first of all, it shouldn't be, because a miscellaneous shelf is just a shelf where books go to die. But also, I should change it. Because the the recognitions is something that I will revisit, and I, I don't foresee revisiting this as often. Uh, let's see what's next here. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, all right. This is the real deal. Uh, uh, I'm actually due for a reread of this. This is Apologia Pro Vita Sua uh, by uh, John Henry Newman. This is his, his great... Uh, let's see. How does Penguin describe it? Uh, Having inspired and led the Oxford or Tractarian movement before he abandoned Anglicanism for the Church of Rome, Newman regularly found himself the target of virulent anti-Catholic prejudice in Victorian England. 
The Apologia was his autobiographical response to the public attack by the novelist Charles Kingsley on his personal integrity. With it, he not only convinced a suspicious public of the sincerity of his beliefs, but he also produced a literary masterpiece, which has often been compared to St. Augustine's Confessions, and that uh, that is not just publicity speak, that comparison is actually valid. Uh, this is an amazing book. I, it, if you're interested in religious writing, you have to know this book. Not just read it, but know it. Uh, and it, it, this is a very nice edition that should not be down here. Uh, I'll have to... Well, I, like I said, like I mentioned last time, I'm not putting these back on the shelf. I'm just I'm piling them on the floor, and when I'm done, I will just go through these piles and see what's what. <laughs> see what goes where, what needs to be kept, what needs not to be, that sort of thing. What are doubles? Uh, <laughs> okay, this is... Uh, uh, American local color writing, 1880 to 1920. This is uh, an example of something we've mentioned in these penguin tours before. Frida. <sighs> the teddy bear. He's not, he's not safe from her, even though she has a floor full of toys, including new toys that she got in the mail today. But no, she has to attack the teddy bear. Uh, anyway, uh, I was, we've mentioned on this channel before that Penguins, are they do reprints of canonical classics. They do those really well. New introductions, lots of notes, uh, scrupulous new editions, that sort of thing. They also do this. They also do new collections, original collections of things, where their editors will go through and find writings along a heading or a theme or something like this. This is, this is, uh, you can't have him. He's done nothing to you. He hasn't. You can't have him. He's your friend. He's your friend. You know what friends are? Little, little... <laughs> no, you can't have him. No. All right, well, now she wants to bite me instead. <laughs> anyway, this is the latter. This is an, an original collection. I don't think I've read the whole thing. I think I've only just dipped in here and there. Uh, what is this next one? Oh, it's a collection of Lord Dunsany. Uh, this is uh, in the land of time and other fantasy tales, but this is these are his short stories. This is not uh, the King of Elfland's Daughter. I don't think King of Elfland's Daughter is in here. Uh, no, 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 it, it's not. Uh, this this does, however, have a, a, a huge chunk of his short stories, including uh, it's got to be in here. He wrote a short story that you have all just got to read. Drop what you're doing and find it. It is so heartbreakingly beautiful. Yes, the Kith of the Elf Folk is in here, and what a story. Oh, my, what a story. So beautiful, so eloquent, and so sad. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. What's this next one? Fairly Thick? Sacré bleu. <laughs> Charles de Gaulle, champs de -Lise. This is the Penguin Book of French Poetry. Mon Dieu! <laughs> it's a big, thick thing of French poetry. So this does not belong here. There is a shelf for poetry. And this belongs on that shelf. Uh, just here because I forgot about it, that's all. Uh, what's next here? It's like the poems of Robbie Burns. Also should not be here. Also should be up with the... We found a volume of Shelley down here the other day, and there have been others. Just, I'm glad I'm doing this, because it's, it's inhospitable. It's dark and dreary down here. It deserves to be... These books deserve to be somewhere else, or at least in better, in better arrangement. Uh, and what have we got here? Two Spanish picaresque novels. Uh, this is Lazario de Tormes, yes, and The Swindler, uh, just in an English language translation. Don't think I would ever, I've read Lazario de Tormes in, the, in Spanish, I don't think I would ever read it again in English. Uh, and then this last one will be done for today. Oh, okay, this is a double. This is Voltaire, again, Treatise on Toleration. Uh, so, a fairly, fairly lackluster way to end things, but there you go. There's another shelf of this weird penguin annex where I don't know what I'm getting. I thought I organized all my penguins, but I must not have organized these. The main bookshelf right here is organized, except for all these transverse books. They've just been piled in there because it's just the easiest way to deal with them. Uh, because I need more room, and I haven't given them more room. Uh, but this bookcase, no organization at all. Very strange. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up and try and make peace between the teddy bear and my little frown line. <laughs> uh, but I'll see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.